How's it going everybody? So, I've had the Pure Over for about a month now and I've gotten to mess around with it a lot. I've had a lot of trial and error and I really wanted to make sure that I knew what my final thoughts were before I gave my final thoughts because, you know, you can use something a few times but until you really try to figure it out, it doesn't make any sense to give your final judgment on it. So, I will say that this was very difficult to figure out because there were a lot of very frustrating cups of coffee that I did not know how to save. But I think I have enough information at least right now to give you my final thoughts. So I'll start with some of the struggles and some of the issues and then I'll go towards the, the positive qualities. Because one of the first things that I had an issue with was consistency. My gosh, trying to make the same cup of coffee two times in a row was so difficult right out of the gate because I would make a cup for my wife and then I'd make a cup for myself and they would come out completely different. One would have an issue with clogging and you know channeling and then another one would be absolutely fantastic and I would have done nothing different between the two of them. So that was probably one of the most difficult things to um, kind of look past and I didn't know how to fix it. I did eventually start talking to a couple other guys who have used it before, some Instagrammers and stuff. And then I also, honestly, I asked Pierre over. I was like, hey, if I'm running into issues with clogging, what do I do? And something that I found is that you can kind of save a cup of coffee that's being made with the Pierre over. And you use the little stirring wand, actually. The stirring wand, if you put it down at the bottom where the filter is, and you kind of pull back on it. You don't have to go the whole way, but where the holes are, if you just kind of pull back and open it up, it gives an opportunity for the coffee to, uh, or for the water to flow through the coffee to get to the bottom of the cup. It was definitely something that changed the game. It worked so well. I was just wondering if they were trying to like redeem themselves for an issue that they know that they had, but they had a legitimate answer. So yeah, you don't get to just pour it, stir, and then sit you do have to make sure that it's still coming through because if it starts getting really dark up here, it, it can be an issue. It can be a serious issue trying to get a good cup of coffee out of it when you start seeing just drops kind of come in and it's not really trickling well. And so definitely having to monitor that. But what's nice is you get to save it. And, um, you know, there's ways to save other forms of, uh, you know, brewing methods. For the V60 and the Chemex, you can kind of lift the paper filter if you feel like it's started to get a little bit too slow. But for this particular method, taking off the drip tray and just kind of pulling back on the straw with, uh, with the stirring wand um, over the holes, it lets a lot of water through, which really helps as far as the uh, ability to redeem the coffee goes. Another major issue that I've been having is with bits. Lots of little grounds at the bottom of the coffee cup that nobody wants. And the reason that you make something like this in a French press is because you have an opportunity to leave those in the coffee maker so that you can just drink your coffee ideally with a lot less silt and a lot less bits. But um, something that I've found to resolve that is not brewing directly into this or brewing directly into your mug, instead brewing into a carafe. And if you have a different brewing method, like a Kalita Wave or a V60 of some sort, then you likely have a carafe that you use to then kind of pour your coffee from there. Um, I would recommend using it, but be gentle because this is made of glass and it was not designed to go on top of those carafes. It wasn't, it wasn't built for it. It was built to just sit on top of this little guy here and look super pretty and then have everything just work out right down here. Um, but in my opinion, that's not how it goes. And I've tried pouring it out of this and it just becomes this gross, nasty mess. I personally wish that they had made this little thing into like a carafe with a little spout that makes it easy to pour because I'll be honest, I have not found a single way to avoid getting those little bits in the bottom of my coffee. And so that's a major issue that I've never really been able to resolve. Um, except for pouring into the carafe. But again, it's a little wobbly. It's a little, I've, I've never gotten close to breaking it. There was one time where it kind of swooped a little on me and I was like, okay, got, gotta be a little more gentle with this. I'm still, I'm using glass. So that was something I had to be aware of. And one last, not really important issue that I was having was there were times that I was cleaning this 
and a lot of the coffee grounds were getting stuck in the holes while I was trying to rinse it out. And I literally would have like a toothpick or like a push pin to try to get some of the grounds out because I was trying to use water to higher pressure and it wouldn't come out. So that was a little bit of a weird thing to have to try to figure out. But I haven't really run into that problem that much since because I think I figured out my grind size that I like. But that was kind of a, an interesting hiccup during the journey as well. Okay, and now on the positive side, it legitimately makes a pretty tasty cup of coffee. If you like that thicker, richer taste and uh, mouthfeel of French press, I would say that you'd really enjoy a pure over. Um, I think it does provide a lot of clarity when it comes to the flavor profiles as well. I don't think that it's a muddy cup, even though you can get a little of that filmy oil that you can kind of see shimmering on the top. Honestly, it doesn't distract very much, in my opinion, from the final flavors really being able to come out. The other thing is, I like the amount of time that it uh, takes to make. My French press method that I prefer to use takes about 10 minutes. And that, a lot of that time is just sitting and waiting for the coffee to be done. So the fact that this can take a lot less time is, you know, you know saving seven minutes, that's, that's kind of a nice thing to be able to just jump right into your morning coffee. So, uh, and the final thing, I'm going to be honest because coffee isn't just about drinking it, it's about an experience. And I find that the I, I overall idea, it works really well, it's very clever. On top of that, I also think that it looks really great on the shelf. It's very aesthetic, and I don't mind saying that aesthetics are important. They're obviously not as important, in my opinion, as the flavor or quality of the coffee, but it's still a fun thing to say, like to have it on your shelf and for it to look nice, I think that's definitely a positive quality worth mentioning. Now what I want to do is I want to give you my overall rundown of how I make a pure over. I'm going to make a separate video that's just the like a pure over brewing guide, but I'm going to mention what I do in this video as well. So. First thing that I do is what they recommend. I do the 20 grams to 280 grams at the end. And um, I also use about 210 to 205 degrees um, when it comes, depending on the age of the beans. I definitely uh, follow those guidelines fairly well. For my Commandante grinder, my, my manual hand grinder, I use about 32 to 33 clicks. So I usually use about the same amount for a Chemex. And so I do, uh, I do the same grind size for that as well. Now there's a few steps that I'm going to mention that are probably going to help you a little bit when it comes to the overall um, final product when making a pure over. First off is pre-wetting the filter. Now it's weird because it's not paper and usually with uh, paper filters you're trying to rinse the paper out so that it doesn't have that kind of you know papery taste to it. There's no paper here so why would you do that? The reason is it helps spare a lot of coffee grounds from getting through to the bottom into what your pour, like what your coffee is going to end up in. So it makes for a cleaner cup in general. There's still going to be bits. It's inevitable, but I found that that definitely helps. Pre-wetting the filter helps everything to kind of stick down there. So you pour your 20 grams of coffee at the bottom, kind of even out the coffee bed a little bit, kind of shake it around, and then I put it on top of a carafe. I, I use a coffee carafe that I would use for my V60 or a Kalita, something like that. Put it on top and then I use about 60 to 75 grams of water for the bloom phase. So at that point you've started your timer. You pour over this little drip tray and I would say pour pretty generously, pour pretty quickly. The reason is I honestly wait because it's just a different setup. And so I try to pour to where I've coated all of the coffee grounds and, and saturated all of them before I really stop pouring. And so the faster I pour, the more the less time it has to absorb and the more it'll make contact with the coffee grounds. So usually it's between 65 and 75 grams that I find that I, I pretty aggressively pour, hold back, and I wait for about 20 to 25 seconds. Um, and I kind of give a little, no, I don't, I don't really swirl that much. Like maybe if you just want to even it out a little bit, but because of how fast the bloom phase is, I don't think it's super necessary. So at about 20 to 25 seconds, you begin your pour again, this time a little more on the steady side, not quite as harsh. You don't have to be gentle with it because the drip tray does kind of drop everything nice and evenly. So you, you, know, you don't have to swirl around unless you're a creature of habit and it's just what you're used to is moving the kettle around. 
I'm not gonna stop you from doing it, but I don't think it helps at all. So, nice thing is once you've poured the 75, from there you just pour nice and steady up to about 280. And then after that, you stop pouring. You take the drip tray off. You take the stirring wand, um, if you have it near you, or you know, a spoon, whatever. And I just do once forward and once backward. I'm not trying to make a current. I found that the more aggressively I stirred, that it was more likely to clog. And so you're getting a less naturally clean cup of coffee. So I was just doing one swirl around, one swirl back, not trying to you know, get the whole crust all the way to the bottom. Just, just agitating a little bit, getting it a little fussy. And then I just put the trip, drip tray back on. Actually, retract that. I don't, I leave it off. And I remember why now. <laughs> the reason is because if I notice that it starts to, the, the current or the, the brew time starts to get well, really slow and the drawdown phase is being drawn out, before it gets too dark up here, I'll just drop down and I'll pull. And I'll just let there be another little channel. Like, yes, there's channeling and that word is like a curse word in the coffee making. But honestly, it's better than having an extremely dark, nasty cup of coffee. So I just pull and then I let, you know, maybe not all the way across. I think it's a little drastic. Just enough to where you can hear that trickle again, a little that more consistency. <laughs> and when that's done, you just take whatever's in your carafe and gingerly, very gently, so you leave a lot of the sediment and the bits at the bottom, very so quick, very softly, just pour it into your mug and you're good to go. I have, I'm telling you though, I've made some embarrassing cups of coffee with this. And I'm talking about like it being so dark, I didn't know what to do. I literally, one time I lifted this and with a Q-tip I was poking holes at the bottom to try to get it to like flow again and that didn't work. And then there was another time, oh my gosh, there was another time I tried to lift it and pour some of it out. And um, just, you know, it's funny the things you do when you are inexperienced and you just start to panic. There's some stupid stuff you can do. So hopefully that spares you from a lot of trial and error and frustration. Because there was a point, honestly, where I'm like, forget it. This is just a not that good coffee maker. So I'm just going to not use it. Um, but I like the concept. And honestly, I like the idea of um, paperless um, filters because a lot of those oils are apparently very good for you as far as the polyphenols that are in there. I'm reading uh, what's called the Coffee Lover's Diet. I'm reading a book about just how um, coffee can be very healthy for you if it's brewed correctly. And uh, a lot of it is, you know, not letting the paper take those oils that actually help, you know, stabilize some of what is supposed to happen in your body with the coffee. Um, just letting it all come through into your cup is actually a, a part of it being healthy. So it's a nice little feature. But all in all, I like the investment. I don't regret making, um, buying this at all. This is cool and I use it for other things. I do not use it for the pour over because it just doesn't make any sense. Not to mention, it doesn't retain heat that good. It's thick, it's hearty, it's nice, but glass isn't great at retaining heat. So it's just pretty. But that's it for now, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other neat tricks you've come up with or if you have other questions that I maybe didn't address. I'd love to answer them. And um, yeah, but honestly, I hope that wherever you are, you're having great coffee and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day.